laminate flooring must be allowed to acclimate to the environment of the installation area. Leave the closed packages in a horizontal position in the room for 48 hours prior to installation. Preferable temperature should be approximately 17 to 23 degrees Celsius with a relative humidity of 45 to 60 percent. Calculate the amount of flooring you will need by simply multiplying the length and width of the room in feet. Add an extra 10% of that total for waste during installation. Then divide by the square footage total of the flooring package. For best appearance, plan on laying the panels parallel to the main light source to minimize the appearance of joints. Decide what and how much finishing molding or transition pieces you will require. If your room is more than 7 meters wide, you will need to allow for an expansion joint. Joints in large rooms can be positioned in any inconspicuous place. If existing baseboard moldings are difficult to remove, they may be left in place. Quarter round molding is all that is needed to cover the spacing gap between molding and flooring. Tools and supplies required are foam underlay, tuck tape, spacers, tapping block, pole bar, saw, hammer, utility knife, pencil, tape measure, ruler, construction adhesive. If installing over a crawl space or on a concrete floor, you must also install a 6 mil polyethylene vapor barrier under your foam underlay or use a convenient 2-in-1 foam underlay that has a vapor barrier built in. The underfloor or subfloor must be thoroughly even, dry, clean, and solid. Any carpet staples or glue residue must be removed to ensure proper installation. To check for evenness, hammer a nail into the center of the floor. Tie a string to the nail and push the knot against the floor. Pull the string tight to the farthest corner of the room and examine the floor at eye level for any gaps between the string and floor. Move the string along the perimeter of the room, noting any gaps larger than 3 millimeters. Any floor unevenness of more than 3 millimeters per 1 meter must be sanded down or filled with an appropriate filler. Floors must be carefully checked for moisture problems. Any moisture problems need to be solved before installation. New concrete needs to cure for at least 60 days before installation. For installation on concrete floors or any floors over a crawl space, a vapor barrier must be laid down first. Use 6 mil poly. Run 5 centimeters up the walls and overlap seams 45 centimeters. Tape seams using tuck tape. This product is not suitable for damp rooms such as bathrooms, saunas, rooms with damp concrete, rooms with floor drains, or rooms that could potentially flood. For installation on hot water heated floors, please obtain special installation instructions from your laminate flooring dealer. Laminate flooring is not recommended for use with electric floor heating. All flooring installations require foam underlay. If you're working on a floor over a crawl space or on a concrete floor, you'll also require a poly vapor barrier as described earlier. Make sure that you run the foam underlay in the same direction as the laminate panels. Underlay should be butted side by side with no overlap. Tape seams together. Always check panels for defects such as chips and color or sheen differences under good light conditions. Also check that the channel is clean and free of debris. First you will need to remove the tongue on the long side of the panels that face the wall from the appropriate amount of panels for your first row. This is to ensure that the decorative surface of the laminate is well under the finished trim when installed. Use a utility knife to score through the tongue several times until it easily snaps off. Start in a corner by placing the first panel with its trimmed side facing the wall. Use spacers along each wall to maintain an expansion space of 8 to 12 millimeters between the wall and the flooring. Remember that this product is primarily wood and needs room to expand and contract. At no point should you attach the floor to any surface. 
Attach the ends of the panels by carefully lining up the edges and using a hammer and tapping block. Continue along the wall until you reach the last full panel, connecting them as you go. To fit the last panel, rotate the panel 180 degrees with the pattern side upward. Place beside row. Mark off the excess and saw off. When using a handsaw, cut on the decorative surface. If you use a jig or circular saw, cut with the decorative side down to avoid chipping. Use a pull bar to tap the last piece into place. Begin the next row with the remaining piece from the previous row to stagger the pattern. Pieces should be to a minimum of 20 centimeters long and joint offset should be at least 40 centimeters. To attach the panels, tilt the panel you are attaching slightly upwards, about 15 to 25 degrees. When lowered, the plank will click into place with light pressure, but make sure gaps are as small as possible. Continue along, locking each piece into place, ensuring a straight, tight fit, beginning with the long side first, and then tapping the short one into place, using a hammer and a tapping block. Door frames and heating vents also require expansion room. First, cut the panel to the correct length. Then place the cut panel next to its actual position and use a ruler to measure the areas to be cut out and mark them. Cut out the marked points allowing the necessary expansion distance on each side. You can trim door frames by turning a panel upside down and using a handsaw to cut away the necessary height so that panels slide easily under the frames. To fit the last row, lay a panel on top of the previous row. With a tongue to the wall, lay another panel upside down on the one to be measured and use it as a ruler. Don't forget to allow room for spacers. Cut the panels and tap into place using the pull bar. Reducing strips are used when the adjoining surface is lower than the laminate flooring or when the flooring meets carpet. Position the U-Track 7 mm between each edge of the flooring. Screw, nail or glue down the track directly to the subfloor and then insert the reducer strip into the track. When two level surfaces meet, like in a doorway or for expansion joints, use a T-molding. Position the U-Track as described and then push the T-molding into the track working from left to right. Landing molding is used to finish flooring on landings or stair edges. Moldings need to be glued and screwed down to the subfloor for safety and stability. Color fill should be used to cover countersunk screws. Finally, to finish the perimeter of the room, install quarter round molding using finishing nails. Quarter molding is nailed directly into the baseboard. Use a I told you.